Bienvenue à tous. Welcome to reporters here on France 24. In this edition, over 200,000 children are reported missing in India. One man is leading a crusade to find as many as he can. And our reporter, Philemon Remy, has been to meet him. Philemon, tell us how this report came about. Well, Mark, when you live in New Delhi at almost every traffic light, you can see street children who are begging. But they don't keep that money. They are exploited by uh, several gangs. And when you do some research on this, uh, the figures, as you just mentioned, are just as shocking as those images in the streets. And to rescue them, to find them, there's one man who decided to make it his mission, Kailash Satyarthi. Over the last 40 years, he has rescued more than 87,000 uh, children. We managed to meet him and follow his work and follow the work of his teams during the last two months, as you will see in this report. Let's take a look now at uh, Philemon's uh, report. In India, a child disappears every eight minutes. In the capital, New Delhi, six out of ten children who go missing are never found. They are called the lost generation. We're on the road with Arshad, who has worked for over two decades with the child protection NGO Bachpan Bachao Andolan. Today, he's on his way to a sweatshop where underage children are illegally employed. We're going to conduct the raid after many days of preparation. We're sure that we can rescue at least 25 to 30 children. This operation was carefully planned in cooperation with the police and is not without its risks. We've seen that area and surveyed it thoroughly. We've checked everything. Anything can happen there. From fighting to throwing stones, it can be very dangerous. Several members of his team have lost their lives, either in rescue operations or in retaliation from the gangs that employ and exploit children. Arshad wants to arrive before everyone else, even before the police. For him, each minute that passes puts the children at even further risk. He knows that informants are everywhere and news of the raid could leak. There's a child in there, take him. This building is in the heart of the capital, New Delhi. Inside, there's a sweatshop where dozens of children are embroidering handmade luxury saris. How old are you? 16 years old. I know you're not 16. More like 14. Go on, it's all right. Go get your things and your clothes. Some seem lost, others are frightened. The authorities will soon seal off each room. If we don't seal up the doors, their boss will obviously come and get his stuff and run away. And after that, the police won't be able to find him. But on the other hand, if he agrees to pay the children what they're owed based on the minimum wage, the seals will be removed. Under Indian law, employing minors is a crime. But the perpetrators often evade arrest and disappear, only to resurface a few months later with a new sweatshop. Arshad is concerned about the welfare of the children. Have you eaten since this morning? Did you have breakfast? Paroma, come on, they haven't had anything to eat at all. I knew it. These boys are between 8 and 16 years old. Some of them have been forced to work 16 hour days and have not seen sunlight in months. It's going to be a long day for them. They will now be taken to the local police headquarters. Since they haven't been officially identified, a number is assigned to them. There are 42 of them, many more than Arshad anticipated. 
This raid was a real success. I can't describe what I feel after saving these children. It's wonderful to see them laugh again. Now we'll finish identifying them, they'll be able to go back to school one day, grow up and find their place in society. Tonight, they will be taken to a temporary shelter where the NGO and the police will begin the process of identifying these children and finding their parents. These sweatshop raids were pioneered by Kailash Satyarthi, who set up Bachpan Bachao Andolan, the NGO Arshad works with today. The former engineer has been fighting for child rights since the 1980s. Since then, he has rescued more than 87,000 children. In 2014, he was jointly awarded the Nobel Peace Prize along with Malala Yousafzai. There is no greater violence than to deny the dreams of our children. In the North Indian state of Rajasthan, Satyati runs a rehabilitation center for children who were rescued but are yet to be reunited with their families. At present, nearly a hundred children live here. Some families were never found, while others have chosen to leave their children in the care of the NGO due to financial constraints. This year, the center is celebrating its 20th anniversary. <laughs> These children once considered themselves voiceless, but here, they're slowly regaining their confidence. So I'm so happy. Children themselves are taking the lead. They are opposing child marriages. They are fighting child labor. So they have emerged as a leader. This usually discreet activist is welcomed like a rock star by the children. It's the most beautiful day of my life. I never thought I'd meet Kailash Satyati one day. The organization works to restore the children's confidence and educates them, all under the watchful eye of Satyarthi's wife, Sumedha. Here I'm a mother, a big sister, a sister-in-law and even a grandmother to them. I give everything for them. I want them to one day be able to fulfill their dreams so that they can be in charge of their future. She had to sell her jewellery to get their NGO off the ground. For 40 years, the couple have dedicated their lives to children in need. Actually, um, Sumedha, my wife and I have been always partner in this fight. Otherwise, it was not possible. My fight was also against the mindset, societal mindset. So that was not very easy to convince the people. It was a kind of um, a belief that uh, children are working and nothing is wrong and bad in it. So how to change that mindset was a big thing. They are leading the charge in this cause, but they have also become targets. But slowly we started getting threats, and then they turned into the violent attacks on us. I lost two of my colleagues. One was shot dead, uh, one was beaten to death. None of that shook his resolve. I have just one single aim in my life, that every child should be free to be a child, free to laugh and cry, free to enjoy fullest of her childhood. In the center, the younger children receive lessons in reading, writing and physical education. Those older than 14 get vocational training, and a select few are even sent to university. Suhail was rescued when he was five years old. Today, he's 11. When I arrived here, I didn't know where I was. So in the beginning, I was a bit frightened. But when I started talking to everyone, my fear vanished. Then I started enjoying being here. There are many facilities here. Do you remember anything about your mother and father? No, and now I feel like this place is my only home. The NGO has never been able to find his family. 
five years ago, the police would register only one out of ten missing children cases. A meeting is underway in the New Delhi office of Bachpan Bachao Andolan. Heading the meeting is Satyarthi's son, Bhuvan Rebu. In 2013, he successfully lobbied the police to investigate every single case where a child had been reported missing. He also helped set up a national database. The biggest problem was that it included hundreds of thousands of photographs. And who would go through uh, like 100,000 photos of a missing child with a child who's been rescued? So we uh, wanted uh, facial recognition uh, softwares to be included. After uh, our application and an intervention by the High Court of Delhi, uh, the Delhi police run a pilot on about 45,000 children that had gone missing. The results of the pilot project exceeded all expectations. Last May, in just four days, the police managed to identify nearly 3,000 missing children. This software will eventually make it easier to reunite the children with their families. In the North Indian state of Bihar is this village, home to one of the 42 children rescued in the raid a month ago. Thanks to the facial recognition system, the authorities were able to locate his family. Ali is 12 years old. His mother had given up all hope of finding him until she received a call a few days ago. The phone rang and I heard a voice asking to speak to Ali's mother. Then I heard his voice, my son's voice. After days and days of him disappearing, I burst into tears. I couldn't even stop, but it was tears of joy. I was happy to hear him. Slowly, Ali began talking to his parents about his experience in the sweatshop. Down there, they told me how to sew saris and told me that if I followed their instructions, I wouldn't have any problems. But I had bloody fingers because of the needles and I was in pain. I slept in a room with a dozen people. Half of them were children like me, but the others were adults. His parents are also trying to understand why he fled home. My father had no job. I had no more food. I was hungry. That's why I left. Tough words for a mother to hear. This is one of the poorest regions in the country. The only source of income here is working in the fields where most people earn rupees 200 or a little more than 2 euros daily. You see how we live. We sleep in this room of our four children. What do you want us to do? We are poor and we can't afford more. I can endure all the suffering in the world to try and give him a better life, but I don't want him to run away again. Ali was reunited with his family. His story has a happy ending, but that's rare. 200,000 children are still missing in India. Our reporter Philemon Remy is still with us. Philemon, thank you for that fascinating and in many ways scary insight into what happens to some children in India. And of course, as you and I are talking, there are still many hundreds of thousands of children who are missing. Yeah, well, many are still in the hands of uh, these mafias. In our report, it's an embroidery workshop which was raided, but as I mentioned before, some of them are forced uh, to beg for the girls. For most of them, they become domestic maids in some families, and some of them, as young as eight years old, are forced to work up to 18 hours per day. And to find them, it's much more difficult because the employers make sure that they don't leave the house some other girls, some other boys are forced into prostitution. But among those children who are still missing, some of them are actually inside governmental child care centers. And the authorities cannot just identify them because they have no papers or because uh, the family, uh, when they reported the disappearance of their child, had no photo to give to the authorities because they are uh, too poor. And for those last ones, uh, the use of this facial recognition software is a big hope, a hope to find again their family. Families. Indeed, as you're saying this, Philip, and one considers their situation, and often the laws don't really play in their favour. Let's take a listen, listen to uh, Kailash Satyati talking about that problem. Some years ago, nobody talked about trafficking. This phrase was not used because India did not have any law. India still does not have any law against trafficking, a specific law. So we have been struggling. And the government has recently announced that they are going to bring this uh, bill 
in the next uh, parliamentary session. I hope so. Campaigner Kailash Satyati there on the situation that he's dealing with and these children are victim of. And Philomen, what are the laws and the legal frameworks that need to change that he hopes are going to change? Well, Mark, it's important to remind that when Kailash Satyati conducted his first rescue operation in 1981, there was no law in India to protect children, not until 1986, uh, when the government uh, introduced a first law on child labor, since that India has ratified uh, two international conventions, one of minimum age and one on forced labor. It is now forbidden uh, to employ a child under 14 years old, but another important uh, legal aspect is laws against uh, trafficking of human beings, trafficking of children, because this is what we're talking about when children are exploited and deprived of their rights. And for this, it's in 2016, two years ago, that the first bill was presented, but a bill which includes punishing laws uh, for traffickers, but nothing concrete for the victims in terms of uh, compensation or rehabilitation in the society. Those changes are well and good, Philemon, but the fundamental issue that forces many children to, to run away from home, for instance, to seek a better life in some way, shape or form, and often it doesn't work, as we've seen. The fundamental cause is poverty, and it's a diff different job trying to change that, isn't it? Exactly. Uh, according uh, to the last statistics of the World Bank, uh, at least 20% of the Indian society live under the extreme poverty line with less than $1.90 per day. So many families cannot afford to give food uh, to their children. Some of them are selling their children to what we call recruiters who come into the villages. And on the other hand, there are some children who just run away because they are starving, as we saw in the report uh, with the little Ali. And, but what we don't see in the report is something that he, t he told us is that he loves his parents but he really wants one thing going back to a center rehabilitation center run by Kailash Satyati because according to him that's his only chance to make something out of his life. It is a very sad state of affairs. Philip and thank you for your fascinating report. See it again via our website francefancat.com. This is reporters on France Fancat. Stay with us.